our strong SPC floors are floating floors that can be laid directly on top of firm, even and dry subfloors. When laying strong SPC floors, you'll need approximately 10% more material than the size of the room. Before beginning the installation process, make sure to read the manufacturer installation manual carefully. Place your strong SPC floors in the room where you will install it for a minimum of 24 hours so it can acclimate to the room's temperature and humidity levels. An underlay mat is not required as the floor is pre-attached with a 1mm thick underlayment. Only several tools are required, a utility knife, a tape measure, a pencil, a tri-square, a pull bar, a soft faced or rubber mallet, a tapping block, and some 6 to 8 mm flooring wedge spacers. It's recommended to install the floors in parallel direction to incoming sunlight. Define the plank size of the first and last row for a more even looking room at the end of the installation. Measure the length of the room and divide it by the width of the plank. Consider the wedge spacer gaps at the sides of the room. The remainder row should be cut so the planks in the first and last row each have at least 5 cm width. Define the necessary length of the start and end plank for each row. Measure the width of the room and divide it by the length of the plank. Consider the wedge spacers at the side of the room. The remainder plank should be at least 20 cm in length. If not, cut the first plank so the start and end plank are at least 20 cm in length. To do this, mark the plank. Score it using your utility knife and straight edge. You'll also need to back cut the underlayment on the bottom of the plank. Then break the plank along the score line. Start the installation by making sure the subfloor is clean, dry and flat. Keep in mind that strong SPC is rigid, so the tongues and grooves are fragile. Be careful not to damage them. Insert wedge spaces between the walls and planks on all sides of the room. The gap will be covered by desired edging strips after the floor installation is complete. Begin with the top left corner with the tongue side of the plank facing the wall. Lay the first row of planks from left to right. To lock the planks together, hold the tongue and groove of the plank you're about to lay at a slight angle to the tongue and groove of the plank you're connecting it to and click in. You know the planks are properly connected when there are no gaps between the two planks and they are completely flat on the ground. It's important the first row is completely straight, as all the other rows will be connected to it. To cut the last plank of a row to size, turn the plank so the edge to be connected to the previous plank is facing the wall, and place the plank over the gap between the previous plank and the wall. Then mark, score and snap the plank. You'll now have a plank of the right length to complete the row, which must be at least 20 cm. Stagger the planks of the first two rows and make sure there is always at least 20 cm overlap between the short seams from row to row. Now click in the next plank, starting at the short side, so the long side comes to rest on the groove of the preceding plank. Slightly lift the plank to be laid of the preceding plank and press both into the groove while lowering both planks simultaneously. Make sure the planks are properly locked into one another. Close small gaps using your tapping block and mallet. Once you've laid the first two rows, it will be easy to lay the remaining rows. To lay a plank around projections, measure the protruding object and mark the dimensions of the respective plank. Next, cut the plank to the required dimensions and break off the excess.
Complete the flooring installation by removing the wedge spacers and installing the edging strips to cover the expansion gaps. Install T-moulding or multi-purpose reducer in doorways to create an attractive transition from one room to another. Now it's time to enjoy your new strong SPC floors.